everybody, Dre here, and today is a super exciting day in Hydraneer because we have the largest update the game has seen yet. 1.3 is here, there is new technology to check out, and I think by the end of today we're going to have some Goliath drills on our system here. That or we're just going to build a whole separate system for Goliath drills, and hopefully we can get some of those giant nuggets. Now in this episode, I will also be announcing the winner for the gold bar challenge that I had going on in the last episode. I'm going to be doing that at the end of this episode, though, because I ran into some issues. Uh, if you want to know right about it right now, I'll have a time slot where you can go check it out. Uh, but I didn't want to put it at the start of the uh, video just because I want to get right into the fun stuff. But yeah, competition's going to be at the end. Feel free to check it out. Uh, before that, though, let's get into Hydraneer and check out what has changed in this wonderful game. Well, the first thing I'm noticing is we have new small uh, houses everywhere. So before, this was kind of just like hilly landscape. There wasn't really much here. It's nice to see that there's kind of points of interest now. I think the developer said he added those because the roads were kind of confusing. And yes, I've been indeed lost on them quite a few times. A whole new store, as you can see. We got a new vehicle store, and I think we have an upgraded dump truck now. Um, yeah, this one's actually more expensive. It looks like it comes in three different colors now, which is nice. And then this is the original. Now, I think the only thing that has really changed is the back size is a little wider now, so we can store more stuff in here. We won't have explosive cargo like we did before. Um, so yeah, I might even pick up one of those right now. I got some money here, so let's do that. The big question is, what color? I don't want any more green. I've seen enough green. I think I'm gonna go for white. Okay, I lied. I thought it was a lot bigger. Clearly, um, size is deceptive. Now, I did do some research, though, to see what the difference is. It's basically faster, and it's got better braking, and if you've ever driven this truck before, you know the braking ba basically doesn't exist. So, um, yeah, I thought it'd be a bigger uh, back end, because I think he talked about making the um, truck wider, but I guess both of them have been updated to be wider, so we don't have so many uh, explosive issues. Uh, so yeah, this one's just faster, and I guess we can test the braking out. I mean, it's still... Those brakes could be better, but I guess they're technically better than Mark 1, and I got so much money, so who cares anyways. Um, we'll just park this over here and probably never use it again. <laughs> okay, and we have a new store. This is the conveyor store, so we have conveyor barriers now. You can basically put these on the sides, and um, I mean, I, I, I guess it just blocks the sides just as a, as a wall would. Uh, but more importantly, we have left and right conveyors now, so we can churn our conveyors, which is really nice to see. Also, there's something called a centralizer conveyor belt. Oh yeah, here it is. Used to move resources around a base, pushes objects to the center of the belt. Um, okay, so yeah, it makes them go... Oh, okay, is it... Can you actually see? Yeah, it goes uh, from wide to smaller. So, I've always had issues with the, um, with the conveyor having a bunch of a buildup on e either side. It looks like this basically fixes that issue and forces the resources to go into the center of the conveyor belt. So, we'll definitely probably be installing some of those later on, if not today. But yeah, those are some small upgrades. Uh, let's move on here because there's something really exciting, and I think it's going to be at this store, which is the old tools store. First of all, we have a new smelter. Before, we had the um, furnace, crucible, and casting mold. This is basically all three items built into one, which is fantastic. We're going to be buying some of those. We have a new funnel as well. It looks to be wider. But most importantly is David. Now, I love the name of this because if you don't know, the Goliath drill is called Goliath, David and Goliath, get it? These are obviously meant to be worked together. So what this thing does is automatically build dirt on top of it. You need to use shards to do this, but Basically, if you put that underneath Mr. Goliath here, uh, he will never have an issue stopping as I did before. Because when this thing hit air, it would just break the Goliath drill. So now David should fix that issue and we should be able to have automated Goliath drills. Which is really, really exciting. Now there's one more major thing to this update. Uh, there's still a bunch more stuff, but I'm not going to be able to showcase everything today. And it's in the harbor over here. Now, I don't think we'll get to this today. I'll definitely be doing another episode on this, but there is now a blueprint system, and this is basically a whole store. Um, this is really cool. Obviously, there's not too much here yet. I think this is just the start of the blueprint system, but we got a new tool screwdriver, which is used for the workbench. Obviously, the workbench is brand new as well, and that's how you use blueprints. Blueprints can be seen down here. 
And basically what blueprints do is make more complex items. So, for example, we need swords to build candles. Candles build teapots. Teapots can build um, elbow pipes. They can also build shields. And then shields can build tea pipes. And basically you can go up the tree here all the way up to building your own weapons, which is the blunderbuss. And then uh, you can build a tool bag as well, which is actually probably what I'll be mostly making because I use a lot of tool bags. This could be an episode in in itself, though, so we'll get back to that later. I just noticed that a giant shard in there. Can I steal that? I could really use that shard. Uh, but yeah, I don't think we'll get into the blueprints today unless the Goliath drill goes really well. Um, but yeah, you'll obviously see that on the channel in the very near future. So yeah, we'll get back to that later. All right, first things first. Let's see how this thing works, because honestly, I am extremely excited for this, because if we can automate the ingot making process i don't know if this just pops out or what um obviously we can put a conveyor belt down here and then store our bars automatically i won't have to manually do all this so obviously i'm making lots of bars here so let's just ch test one out so we'll just take one, one of these giant oh god okay but if we drop one of these in here it, it doesn't want to go in. what the hell is it too big like why is it fl oh, oh okay that was weird it kind of floats at the top there. Again, this update isn't even out yet. The developer wasn't nice enough to give me this early. Uh, so he might be doing some bug fixes, but it kind of floats on top. Uh, I just want to see how this works. Do I have to press a button or something? Oh, I do. Oh, I wish it automated that drop process. And then if it drops down or if we could push it somehow, obviously, if we keep making bars, it might even push it. Let's try that. Uh, I'm not going to take any more out of that because it explodes. We'll just use a little guy here. One thing is it's much faster. Oh, it shows how um, deep it goes as well now, too, which is really cool. But I have to, unfortunately, yeah, click it. I wonder if, wonder if we could automate clicking somehow. <laughs> So hopefully in the future, we'll just automatically tip when it's ready to melt. I think that would be amazing for automation. Obviously, right now, it's not really doing that, though. So, um, yeah, we'll have to see what happens in the future. Ah, don't you love it when you realize your mic is muted halfway through a Hygenere episode? I know I sure as hell don't, and you're probably wondering why the hell we're here now. Um, so, sorry for the aggressive jump cut, but I don't think you guys want an episode of, uh, Dre as a mime. So yes, unfortunately, uh, my mic somehow muted. Didn't notice until now, but you really didn't miss much anyways, aside from the fact that we're at a totally different mind now, and you're probably very confused. So allow me to explain. So the way David works is not how I expected. I thought we could simply put bedrock dirt underneath Mr. David here, because he's got this little grinder thing, and it would replicate bedrock dirt regardless of where he's placed. No, Mr. David replicates dirt regardless of if he even has dirt underneath him wherever he is placed. So, for example, if we put him here, he should... There we go. Little bit of a lag there, but he should make a dirt meatball. So, he doesn't actually need dirt at all. The thing that David needs is to be where you want the dirt to be extracted. So, if you want bedrock dirt, obviously Mr. David has to be at bedrock. It really wouldn't work with my sky mine. It would just be so much plumbing, and David doesn't work beside walls either. Trust me, I tried hard. So I would have to essentially redesign that whole mine, and why do that when we have many other mines in this game? And this is one of my favorite looking mines anyways. So I have moved over here. This is going to now be our Goliath drill mine. We might do some upgrades later, but it should work as it's currently set up. So I've only done a little bit so far. I have put the new smelters in here, so we should be able to just simply click these things, out pops the bars. Don't need to worry about that anymore. This was actually, if you remember, our Goliath drill mine to begin with. That's why we have random holes in the ground here. The Goliath drills really weren't working very well at the start, so we turned this into a ram drill mine. So yeah, I'm just gonna slowly move all this stuff. Um, it's just kind of disconnected right now as you can see we'll probably just move these ram drills over to the ram drill mine uh but yeah we'll worry about that later there's obviously a lot going on right now so i have dug the tunnel down to bedrock um and then right over here we have the two holes there's one there and one there obviously the goliaths are going to go directly on top of those holes and the davids are going to go right here i have also dug all the way over to the pond so now we just got to bring the piping down so we can um you know, hydro the Davids, and it's gonna be on its own separate system. So we just turn these things on, it makes dirt meatballs that float. I did not expect that, by the way. I thought David just made meatballs on top of them, but no, they just fly into the freaking sky. It's absolutely fantastic. I love everything about David. 
But yeah, that's kind of where we're at. I don't think you really missed much else. Uh, so yeah, we currently only have two holes. We're gonna test it out here. And yeah, hopefully David and Goliath will work well together. I mean, that's the whole point, right? And uh, oh yeah, I did one more thing. If you remember, this used to have uh, an incline up here and then just drop down into a conveyor belt. Now we have the left-handed and right-handed conveyor belts. So I've uh, installed that, put another grinder here, and then I've also lowered the um, harvester here by one, so the funnel is actually working. Again, you guys probably don't even remember this mine, but it was up one more, and then the funnel didn't really work very well, which is why we had so much block blockage issues on this mine. So yeah, hopefully this works well. The funnel looks good. Everything looks good. I don't like that the um, cork is kind of popping out there. Hopefully we don't have any jams, but we'll have to test it and find out. I really haven't tested it much. I mean, I'm still working on installing the Goliaths right now. So yeah. Back to work we go, installing the piping for the Davids, and then hopefully this should be done and work perfectly, but that never works in Hydraneer, so we'll see what happens. Okay, after a lot of work, the pipe, as you can see, is almost done. Now, I don't really know how I want to go about this. The unfortunate part is the pipe goes to the right of the shard chamber, so I want the shard chambers easy to reach. Um but there's no real easy way to do it. I was really hoping the pipe would go into the back of it. So I think I'm gonna have kind of this set up right now. I know it's an absolute mess down here. I've been uh, dropping pipes down so we can finish this thing up. But yeah, that way the pipes go at the same area here and then we'll maybe put a T-pipe down this way and obviously when we expand this out to more Goliath drills, we should be able to easily regen the shard chambers and I don't think we're gonna waste too much pipe. So yeah, we should be able to finish this up now and finally test out this system. So I think just to play it safe, I'm actually gonna open this up too. Uh, that way we're not, you know, running the risk of the meatballs hitting the dirt on the sides or anything. And I kind of like the idea of having this all open, so I'm still gotta do some mining up there. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna open this all up so it's a giant hole in the ground essentially. Okay, so there we go. Something like that for the time being. So yeah, we basically have opened this up as you can see. Oh, this is fantastic. I don't know why, but I love the idea of like a giant quarry mine. Um, so yeah, all we got to do now is kind of test these things out. Um, oh, that's right. I forgot to put an on and off thing here. So we'll just take this out and then there we go. Something like that. And now these things should get water. So all we got to do now is test this out and make sure the meatballs go all the way up to the top. Again, I'm assuming they should. There we go. Now we wait. And... <laughs> and out pops a meatball. Oh my god, I love everything about this. Okay, so we're just gonna turn off the water, um, set these things up, and obviously we gotta install the glide drills, and it should be good. I mean, it looks like they're aimed up. I think this should be good, and then obviously when we want to expand more, we just turn this into a T-pipe, bring this down. It's pretty simple, actually. Now, you might be wondering why there's no filters on this system. The the Davids don't actually break down, so we don't need filters. The only thing we might need to do is boost the system. We'll have to test out how quickly these meatballs go. Uh, but yeah, we should be making two meatballs at the same time now, and they should be going directly up to the Goliath drills, which are going to be installed now. All right, so I guess we'll turn on this system first. I don't know if the Goliath drills will break if there's no meatball underneath it immediately. We'll find out real quick here, but we're going to turn that on. Everything should be working and then go down here and make our meatballs. Oh, that one just popped out right away Okay, so that's perfect. Let's go see if this Goliath drill will work <laughs> This is so weird. It's lit up. That's a good sign So now we just gotta wait for it to grind that yeah, you can actually see the meatball there Um, maybe we gotta get a meatball first. Oh, nope. There we go. Why is it not moving? What the hell do I have to boost this system more? Well, here comes another meatball, and it's just gonna make the perfect little stack. I'm very confused why this isn't moving, though. It should be. So, let's turn off everything before we get a blockage here. Well, that's concerning. The last thing I expected not to work is the conveyor belt that has worked all the time throughout this. So, we got full pressure through the system here. Let me just make sure my hat's a little bright. Um, yeah, that's full pressure. What the hell? Aha! Ha 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 ha! Ah! Oh. Oh my god, it did it! It fixed it! Okay, so I have been troubleshooting with the developer for what feels like forever now. And we have fine- well, they fixed it. I'm the one who just told them about the issues I was having. But 
I feel like I helped a little bit, so that feels pretty good. Uh, clearly, I'm missing one of my things here. So I have done so much troubleshooting. Thank God! Thank God that is over! Oh, it's beautiful. Obviously, we're still having some clumpages up top. We're always gonna have these problems, especially dealing with the inclines. Sometimes they just bump together. Um, we'll clean it out every now and then. The important part is, this is the good stuff. This is the really big dirt. I really wish I, there was a way to get out of here easily. Let me just run back down. But yeah, this is those grade A golden meatballs. So I wanted to make sure we were into the big stuff because as you can see, there's some small ones coming out. He actually changed the spawn rate of big nuggets. So now uh, it's much rarer to get these big guys. Oh, that's not good. Okay, so we're obviously we're gonna have to patch this up a little bit. We got dirt falling through. I can't seem to get this stuff to move either. Also, I don't know if you've noticed, but that's a whole new ore. So yeah, we're officially mining bedrock dirt though. I know it doesn't look like it. It's just uh, this stuff's much rare. I basically had this thing here and I was mining for a bit and some of the good stuff came out. Uh, you just gotta wait a lot longer now to get some of the big ones. Now, even the little guys though are supposed to be worth just as much. It's just um, he didn't want so many big nuggets going throughout systems, which kind of makes sense because they block the systems a lot. Um, so yeah, he turned them into smaller ones, but they're still worth a lot. So yeah, I have to work on this a little bit. I know it's not the prettiest right now. I've been just making sure that it's indeed working. Um, I really don't know why those things aren't moving. Usually when I use the magnet, it fixes them. I don't know. I guess they're shy. Doesn't matter. Well, I'll deal with that later. But yeah, the system's working. That's the important part. Let's go check out those beautiful drills as well. Doing their thing. Drilling down the dirt columns here, as you can see. Interestingly enough, this one's going a lot faster. I'm not sure why, but as long as we have enough of a column, I don't really care. And finally, we're getting some bedrock dirt. Oh, it feels so good. Let's actually just check. I haven't been had it on for too long, but let's see what we're working with here. So I'm gonna shut off the system, and uh, yeah, this is, I love this so much. So we can just pop out whatever we want. Well, that's alarming. Um, we didn't have it on for very long, but are shards rare now? I hope they're not, because I need a lot of shards in my system. Uh, I don't think this is gonna be worth much at all, but just out of curiosity, why do I have a... <laughs> <laughs> a three dollar bar on here. What the <laughs> Okay, hopefully this is worth more than three dollars. Okay, that's not bad. 1,295 for it being on not very long at all is is really really good. Now this Clodium, does it have a thing on this now? Uh-oh. What are we gonna do about Clodium? There's probably gonna be some over here, isn't there? Uh, we have a few gold nuggets. We have a little piece of Clodium as well. So I guess we can just pick it up. It's It's got a 1% spawn chance, by the way. I do know that. Um, so it's extremely rare. I wonder how much it's worth. Let's, um... Huh. I don't have a... I got rid of my melters. Damn it. All right, let's see how much Clodium's worth. I walked all the way back to my other mine just because I have a melter here. So, bam, bam. This is just one nugget, you gotta remember. So I don't know if it's gonna really showcase how much this stuff's worth. I'm just curious. Is it worth a lot? No! No, it is not! I mean, 107, that's actually not awful for one little nugget, now that I think about it. So it is probably worth... I wonder if it's worth more than gold. We'll have to test that out later. I don't have a nugget here to compare. Now, we have to get back to dealing with all these freaking gold bars. So, the update has shrunk my gold bars down by quite a bit. As you can see, throughout the week, I've been slowly putting them into cauldrons because, well, there was a lot of bars to deal with. And, um, yeah, this new update, these used to be about four times the size, and now they are much smaller. I don't know if that means they're worth less or just like the nuggets that I was just talking about, um, if they're just smaller in general in the game now. But yeah, I'm not certain if this is the same amount of gold as I made you guess for. Now, that's not the only issue that came into this competition. I really should have thought before I asked you guys to comment because I got well over 3,000 comments. It's probably sitting at four or 5,000 comments now. And I use an application called TubeBuddy to export comments into Excel. Well, what I didn't know is that TubeBuddy has a limitation of a thousand comments, so I cannot export the comments into Excel to even search them for a winner. What I'm basically saying is I screwed up. I wasn't in the right state of mind after dealing with all those bars. I didn't think it through thoroughly enough, and um, yeah, guessing is really not going to work it out. Now, you could say that I could sim simply check all the comments manually, but to put a crap frosting on top of this crap cake, 
YouTube has updated its comment system and the comments are extremely buggy right now to the point where sometimes they do not show. So to play it safe, I'm simply going to ran- Oh God, why is it breaking now? Okay, to play it safe, I'm gonna simply give you guys more chances to win and I'm going to randomly draw names instead of being the closest. Uh, unfortunately now it's just a random drawing. I'm sorry, I should have did my research before I decided to do a competition. Um, and yeah, I've learned from this one to not simply just do a competition. So, how this competition is gonna work now is we're going to randomly pick winners and you are going to email me. It's gonna be dgeventsyt at gmail.com. You'll see it on the screen now. And that's so I can just confirm you are indeed who you say you are, because unfortunately YouTube doesn't have a PM system anymore. It would be much easier if I could simply PM you on this platform, but no, we're gonna have to do it the email way. So if you win, email me, we'll quickly confirm your YouTube account, and then once you are, have confirmed your YouTube account, I will send you a Steam key for Hydroneer. Sorry if this is a confusing and messy way to do it, but I do have to confirm you are indeed who you say you are. So yeah, let the rolls commence. Six winners, email me, and I will give you a copy of Hydroneer once we confirm. All right, so here we go, first winner. And it is Jonas Norvag Mickelson. I hope I said your name somewhat right. I don't know if you're gonna be close, but you are a winner anyways. The next winner is Troy Destroyer Nine Games. Uh, again, I, did he say the same one as Jonas? I, I, I don't remember what Jonas said, but it was in the 300, so that was, that was, that's kind of surprising. The next one is Nabel Abayu. Again, I'm sorry if I'm saying your names wrong, once again in the 300Ks. Um, this is weird. The next winner is Varn Yggdrasil. Yggdrasil with a, an estimate of 14K. Okay, but you still win anyways. Gabe House with 1.4 million. You are the fifth winner, congratulations. And the final winner with a guess of 1.7 million is Global Genocide. So there are your six winners, guys. Now do not try and change your YouTube nickname to these guys because I have saved their profile IDs so I know exactly who is these people. And yeah, once we confirm you are indeed who you say you are by emailing me, uh, you will get your copy of Hydroneer, so congratulations. Okay, and here is all the bars cleaned. We just got to combine these final few together, so we should be able to stack these guys. Come on, let me, let me get the final one on there. Perfect. Um, that's one easy way to grab bars, by the way. So once we melt that down, we should know the end amount. Now, I'm going to show you guys roughly what the final amount will be, but I'm not going to show the actual amount because obviously I would feel awful if somebody was... Um, Really, really close. So, yeah, I'm gonna keep that a secret. I'm sorry, but you guys will kinda see. You'll, you'll get a rough guess of what it's worth. So there you have it. It's within the 600,000s, if you are curious. So, not bad, not bad at all. And on that, guys, we're gonna wrap up another episode of Hydroneer here. I wanna apologize once again for the messy competition, but I hope you guys enjoyed it regardless. And yeah, I'm really excited about this update. Obviously, we just set up a very basic Goliath drill system today. Uh, in the next episode, we'll be probably working more on that system and moving over there a little bit more. And I would like to check out the blueprints as well, because those are quite interesting to say the least. And I'd like to go more in depth on those as well. So, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it, regardless of the little messy competition. And yeah, as always, guys, thanks for watching and liking, and I'll see you in the next one.